In today's video, NASA shared exciting news about the moon, rockets, and space exploration. They revealed plans for three new lunar rovers, discussed Elon Musk's latest ideas for Starship, announced Blue Origin's return to action, and highlighted the development of new engines for the space launch system. Welcome to Spaceverse, your go-to channel for all things space exploration and technology. Today, we're diving into the latest developments from NASA's Artemis program, where cutting-edge advancements are reshaping the future of lunar missions. Let's discover how these new engines, with their reduced parts cost and enhanced performance, are poised to propel humanity back to the moon and beyond. Will they be the solution to stabilizing the notoriously finicky LS? Stay tuned to find out. The big focus was on NASA's selection of three teams tasked with designing innovative lunar rovers. These rovers will be crucial for exploring the moon's surface. The announcement, made during a press conference on April 3rd at the Johnson Space Center, garnered attention both in person and on social media platforms. The chosen teams, led by Intuitive Machines, Lunar Outpost, and Ventor Astrolab, have advanced to the final phase of the competition, their mission to create superior rovers tailored for use at the Lunar South Pole. Each team brings unique expertise and ideas to the table, with the goal of crafting a rover that can withstand the harsh lunar environment and effectively support future exploration missions. Each of the three teams has already submitted their rover designs for consideration in the competition. These designs are intended to be driven by astronauts and are designed to withstand the lunar environment. However, they will undergo further refinement in the next phase of the competition, with the ultimate prize being a contract valued at $4.6 billion for the winning team. Lunar Outpost, backed by a team of engineers from esteemed companies like Lockheed Martin, General Motors, and Goodyear, has proposed the Lunar Dawn design. This rover resembles a pickup truck featuring large body panels forming a semi-enclosed cabin. Its flat bed on the back serves as both cargo storage and a work platform equipped with what appears to be a winch or crane arm for added functionality. Astrolab, collaborating with Axiom Space and Odyssey Space Research, has unveiled their Flex Rover prototype. This rover boasts a cube-shaped body capable of accommodating crew and cargo, offering a variety of modular options and tools, including a robotic arm. Notably, the vehicle can fold up for more efficient transportation within a launch vehicle and unfold to accommodate larger payloads upon deployment. Intuitive Machines, comprising a team from AVL, Boeing, Michelin, and Northrop Grumman, presents perhaps the most unconventional design of the three. Dubbed the Moon Racer, this sleek, low-sitting rover resembles a race car in appearance. Despite its stylish aesthetics, it promises ample storage and functionality, standing out as a unique contender in the competition. Each team and their prototypes will receive funding for the next phase, although the exact amounts are still unknown. However, Intuitive Machines disclose that they have been granted $30 million for this stage of development. Regardless of the financial support they receive, all three teams will have a 12-month period to complete their prototypes and meet specific criteria. Firstly, the rovers must be capable of operating with or without a crew on board. This means they must be remotely controllable by NASA technicians on Earth when astronauts are not present. Additionally, each team must ensure that their rover has a lifespan of at least 10 years. This could involve creating a single vehicle that lasts a decade on the moon or delivering multiple vehicles, each lasting one year or any combination in between. The primary objective is to have active rovers available for NASA and astronauts to use continuously over the next decade. Furthermore, the teams must ensure that their rovers maintain positional accuracy with no more than a 10-meter deviation from their positioning systems at any given time. Achieving this level of precision is challenging given the absence of GPS on the moon. Moreover, the rovers must be equipped with the capability to generate and store electricity independently. This is crucial for supporting crew missions lasting up to eight hours and surviving lunar night cycles. Additionally, they must meet certain speed and energy storage requirements, including a minimum speed of 15 kilometers per hour and the ability to hold a charge of 20 kilometers on board. These criteria are essential for ensuring the functionality and sustainability of the rovers during lunar exploration missions. At the end of the 12-month period, all these requirements will undergo evaluation. Throughout this time, each team will collaborate closely with NASA to refine their designs to the best of their abilities. Currently, the administration is working to ensure it can award the demonstration contract to multiple teams. Therefore, they aim for each design to be as comprehensive and polished as possible. In this aspect, Astrolab holds a significant advantage. 
Their Flex Rover has been operational at full scale for approximately two years, having undergone test drives in Death Valley, California. These tests caught the attention of SpaceX, who have already agreed to transport the Flex Rover to the moon aboard their Starship rocket in 2026. The winning team will secure the demonstration section of the contract, allowing their prototype to be sent to the moon and tested before the arrival of the Artemis V crew in 2030. If successful, it will likely become NASA's primary crew rover for lunar missions. It's important to note that the term crew rover refers to an unpressurized vehicle. However, during the April 3rd conference, NASA eased an upcoming announcement regarding a pressurized rover. These vehicles, equipped with sealed cabins, could significantly prolong lunar exploration missions and potentially lead to increased traffic on the moon's surface. This may prompt NASA to consider constricting the first lunar roads to accommodate the heightened activity. Elon Musk recently presented SpaceX plans for their prototype Super Heavy Rocket's next test flight and their strategy for the remainder of 2024 at Starbase Texas. A video of this presentation was shared on the SpaceX social media page on X.com on April 6. In the video, Musk discussed the current plan for the fourth test flight of Starship, which is slated for May. This timeline aligns with comments made by SpaceX Gu Gwyn Shotwell in March following the loss of both vehicles in the third test flight. Shotwell emphasized the company's focus on achieving rapid turnaround for subsequent tests to expedite iteration and address any issues promptly. During his presentation, Musk reiterated the importance of rapid testing to identify and resolve significant issues efficiently. He described the upcoming test launch as pivotal for the company's future plans. One of SpaceX's primary objectives for the next test flight is to subject Starship to the high heating regime experienced during re-entry, which led to the vehicle's breakup in the previous test. Overcoming this challenge is crucial for successfully landing Starship on a launch pad. If SpaceX can successfully navigate through the intense heat during re-entry, Elon Musk envisions conducting a controlled landing into the ocean. Control is a crucial aspect that SpaceX needs to address in their rocket testing. In the previous test, the first stage booster exhibited significant instability after executing a remarkable boost back burn maneuver during I-3. Additionally, the second stage ship appeared to roll uncontrollably as it descended through the atmosphere. Therefore, ensuring control is a key focus for the upcoming fourth test flight. Musk mentioned their intention to attempt landing the booster on a virtual tower in the Gulf, although he didn't provide further details. This maneuver might involve demonstrating the ability to slow the booster's descent to nearly zero, a capability necessary for attempting a return to the launch site in Test Flight 5. While Musk acknowledges the ambitious nature of these goals, he expresses confidence in SpaceX's ability to achieve them. He believes there is an 80-90% to 90 chance of successfully capturing a returning Super Heavy booster using the Mechazilla chopstick arms by the end of the year. However, if the fourth test flight fails to demonstrate the required level of control, Musk indicates that SpaceX is prepared to construct up to six additional vehicles this year to support their accelerated pace of test launches. Although SpaceX has already been manufacturing Starships and boosters at an impressive rate, Musk anticipates a significant increase in production with the new factory being built at Boca Chica's Starbase, particularly in the coming year. With this accelerated production rate, the SpaceX team can implement new enhancements to their vehicle, paving the way for Starship version 2. These upgrades include improvements to the Raptor engines, increasing their thrust from 230 to 280 metric tons force, with the potential to reach up to 330 metric tons force. Following this, Musk outlines the plan to continue testing and iterating through new versions of Starship at the Texas site, with operational launches scheduled from Cape Canaveral and Florida. Concurrently, efforts will be made to further enhance the Starship design to reduce costs. However, as is customary, plans are subject to change as new information arises, especially during Starship testing, which often uncovers new insights. The upcoming launch of Starship in May is a positive indication of progress, and we can anticipate further developments thereafter. On April 4th, Blue Origin made an announcement regarding their suborbital commercial crew vehicle, New Shepard. After an explosion during an uncrewed flight in September 2022, the vehicle is set to return to the launch pad with a crew for the first time. While the specific launch date was not disclosed, it is expected to be the next flight of the rocket, which previously launched successfully in December without a crew as a precautionary measure. Blue Origin had previously hinted at an upcoming crewed launch, and it appears that the company is maintaining confidentiality regarding the exact timing of this event. 
The upcoming NS-25 mission is set to carry a full crew of six individuals, including Ned Dwight, a former NASA astronaut candidate and Air Force pilot who never had the chance to go to space. Interestingly, Ed is reported to be just a week older than William Shatner, who flew on a new Shepard in 2021. If Ed joins the trip, he will officially become the oldest person to reach space, which would undoubtedly generate positive attention for the new Shepard program. The explosion that occurred just after liftoff in 2022 was particularly alarming, especially considering that a similar mission had flown successfully just a month prior. Although the capsule's escape systems functioned perfectly, the incident understandably raised concerns among prospective space tourists. New Shepard remained grounded for almost 15 months while investigations identified the engine nozzle failure responsible for the explosion and implemented necessary fixes to ensure the rocket's safety. However, despite this setback, the fact that a full crew has signed up for the upcoming mission indicates continued interest in Blue Origin space tourism offerings. Meanwhile, NASA's Stennis Space Center in Mississippi announced significant progress in the development of the new RS-25 rocket engine intended for use on the Isellus Emis mission rocket. The final certification testing, conducted on April 3, involved a full-duration static fire, with the engine producing over 1,800 kN of force during 500 seconds of full-strength burn. This test marked the conclusion of a rigorous 12-run series that commenced in October 2023 aimed at thoroughly assessing the performance of the engine's new materials and manufacturing techniques. NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, currently relies on four original RS-25 engines, which have been repurposed from the Space Shuttle program. Given the upcoming Artemis lunar missions, there has been a clear emphasis on designing an updated version of these engines. Innovative construction methods play a pivotal role in this endeavor, with many of the new engines reportedly being produced using 3D printing technology, Technology demonstrations, such as the raw Murray nozzle tests conducted last October, have paved the way for this advancement. Utilizing 3D printed parts alongside modern actuators, flex sticks, and turbo pumps has resulted in the creation of an RS-25 engine with a remarkable 30% reduction in parts cost without compromising on power or efficiency. The successful outcomes of these tests have led Aerojet Rocket Dyne, the long-standing manufacturers of the RS-25 engines since the shuttle days, to secure a contract with NASA to supply four new engines for SLS launches, corresponding to EMIS missions 5 to 9. However, the crucial question remains, will these new engines contribute to stabilizing the historically temperamental LS? If the performance of the new components mirrors their success in testing, there is optimism that the reliability of NASA's rocket system could see significant improvement in the future. And that's it. Thanks for joining us on this cosmic adventure today. If you enjoy diving into the wonders of space exploration with this, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to Spaceverse for more fascinating content. Keep looking up and until next time, may your journeys among the stars be filled with wonder and discovery.